Hi, it's Rob Moore here. I set up my new foundation last year to help underprivileged and young entrepreneurs start and scale their business uh, and also to be enterprising, to be able to fund um, their lifestyle, to teach them about money and business. And to celebrate that, if you like, I wanted to share five ways that young entrepreneurs, your kids, the young people you care about in your life or you, if you're young and struggling for money, five quick ways that you can earn money fast. And you know what? In these five tips I'm about to give you, it's more than just the tips of earning the money, much more than that. It's the leverage and the experience you get doing it. So before I come on to those five things, uh, just recently uh, in the UK, um, Labour have announced that they want to uh, fund bus passes for the under 25. Uh, and I just think that's an absolutely dumbass thing to do. Uh, now, sure, it might help some struggling people get to work. But really, are more people that weren't working going to go to work now and excited and enthused about going to work because their three or five pound bus pass has been subsidised? Completely and utterly ridiculous. It's not going to make millions more young people go out and be more productive, more effective, to learn to contribute, to produce to inspire, to educate themselves. And the problem we have in our society uh, to getting young people energised, enthused, productive, you know, to create, to inspire, to grow businesses, to create economy. Everyone talks about, you know, increasing the economy. The way we're going to do that is by educating them, training them, giving them tools and resources to set up their own businesses or to be more productive, efficient and to earn more for the companies that they work for, to go up the career ladder, not bloody paying three and five pound bus passes that they're never going to get on anyway. And after all, shouldn't we be teaching the kids to go and get a lift with your parents or get a lift with a mate? Get there somehow, get there on the bike. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, Sam has just said he's 21 years old. He doesn't want a bus pass. He wants a driver. Exactly. If Sam's earning enough money so he can hire a driver so he can work in the back of the car, that's what we should be teaching the young entrepreneurs uh, to do. And that's really a lot about what my foundation has been set up to do. Anyway, ran over, I've got five tips. Now, a lot of these are for maybe 25 and under. Some of these are for 15 uh, and under. Some of these you can do, some of these you want to pass on to your kids. Okay, so the first thing is, I remember when I was young, weirdly, I really enjoyed ironing. I think I was a bit of an introvert and I felt like, you know, I could iron my designer clothes that I was so proud of and I didn't have to talk to people. Um, and my mum used to pay me £10 for, 10p for a small, £10, 10p for a small item and 20p for a larger item. And I had to do pants and socks for free. And I just thought, you know what, if you are under 18, living at home, wanting a part time income, why don't you approach your parents and the friends uh, of your parents and say, hey, look, for 20p small item, 50p for big item, after all inflation, <laughs> um, I will iron all your stuff. I'll, I'll pick it up and I'll drop it back. Now, we have an ironing lady that comes to our house. She picks up all of our ironing. She charges something ridiculous like 10 quid a kilo. Um, and then she delivers it back. And it's just such so liberating an experience for me. If I all ironed anything of mine, I'd ruin it and it'd take me forever. Um, now, I'll come back to this in a minute. Paula said, can you do something similar for the over 40? So, Paul, yes, I will. I'm going to put this on my money podcast. I'll do something for the over 40s as well, just for you. In fact, Paul, what you should do if you're over 40 is leverage your 15-year-old son to do that and earn 30% of his money. How's that? All right. Now, the ironing isn't just the money because, you know, evenings, weekends, spare time, you can do ironing and you can be watching on the TV behind me or behind you uh, an autobiographical documentary or a business documentary. You could be listening to a podcast or an audio book. So really, you know, you'll earn, I don't know, 50, 75 quid extra a week. But more importantly, you can net time and get the education in your ears. You know, listen to podcasts on e-commerce, listen to my money podcast, etc., and learn while you're earning. I love the leverage of learning while earning. The second thing then, and this is just so easy to do, I don't know why more people don't do it. Go to your parents, go to the friends of your parents and ask them what stuff have they got that they don't want that they could flog on eBay. You know, everyone's got clutter around the house. 
stuff, material items that they've built up that they don't want anymore, but they haven't got the time or don't know how to effectively get stuff sold on eBay. So what you do is you go and collect your stuff and the family stuff. You say, hey, look, I'll um, try and negotiate anywhere from 30 to 50% of the net profits and you list on eBay, um, you sell the stuff, you deliver it, you make a postal run you know, every two or three days, you earn decent money. Then once you've earned that money, you can invest in some products and you can go and set up a Shopify account or an Amazon e-commerce account and you can start selling other products. You can sell personal development books and CDs and audio programs that you can buy on eBay for a quid and sell on for more money. Um, you know, really, this is trading. And if you read the biographies and autobiographies of some of the most um, successful millionaire or billionaire entrepreneurs on the planet, you might read people like um, Gerald Ratner or Neville Wright or Lord Sugar or, you know, James Kahn or Peter Jones, all these people, they've all learned how to trade in the free markets. They've learned how to sell. Um, and, you know, if you haven't got a load of money to buy product, then you sell stuff to generate a pot to buy product to sell more stuff. And before you know it, you have a proper retail online business, an e-commerce business. And it's so easy for young people because we're all stuck to our devices. I was trying to find it. I'm talking to it. We're all stuck to our devices. You can run any of these e-commerce sites on an app on your phone. It's easier than ever. And this is not just for the under 15s and the under 18s. This is also for the 40 and 50 and 60 year olds. Um, the third thing then, um, and now as long as you're old enough and you get permission from your parents here, I would go and find the best streets in your town or city. Um, so we've got here Thorpe Road, Westwood Park Road uh, and Longthorpe. I'd go down those, I'd knock on every door, especially the ones with the nice cars outside. And I'd say, hey, I'll wash your car for 15 or 20 quid or whatever. Would you like me to wash your car? Um, the great thing about this is, one, you're going to earn some money. Two, you're going to get some knockbacks, which teaches you about knockbacks because you need to know about knockbacks. You need to know, you need to toughen up and get wise on the street and understand what it's really like. You're going to take rejection. You need to learn how to lose as well as how to win. You need to feel that and, and build up a barrier to that. But the, 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 the third best thing about this, in fact, the best thing about this isn't the 15 or 20 quid you're going to earn washing the car. I'll tell you what's great about it is it's the millionaires you're going to meet. So you pick the best cars first. Here's the thing. They can afford the most. Um, and as you get to know them, um, then they're going to introduce you to, uh, you know, successful and wealthy other people. If someone knocked on my door and I opened it, admittedly, I might a bit, be a bit defensive at first. Um, but as long as they're not trying to sort of pitch me to vote or sell me, um, you know, some clean easy or something like that. And it was a young lad. And he said, hey, look, I'll wash your car. Pay me afterwards. Um, I'll treat you with total respect. I only pay if you love the job. I'd give him the job. Um, and then if he said to me, hey, Rob, do you want me to come back in two weeks and do that? I'd do that. And if he came back for a, a few weeks and did it three or four times and hey, said, hey, Rob, will you sign this direct debit form uh, and I'll give you a 30 percent discount and he's got the money coming out every month. I would do that. And then if he said, hey, Rob, can I do your Range Rover? I'd give him that job. And then if he said, hey, can I do your Ferrari? I'd give him that job. And then if he said, hey, have you got any friends or anyone you know that wants this? I'd give him that job. And then if he started employing people and sending them around, I'd give them the job. All right. You get to meet the rich people. You grow a proper business. See, it's not just, like I said, about the pocket money you're earning, because the pocket money is important. It's disposable money. It's about the lessons you're getting about business and free markets and trade and selling and, you know, as the Americans like to say, hustling. OK, the fourth thing you could do, and I learned this from Caleb Maddox, who learned this from his dad. And I thought this was just one of the most genius things a, a parent could give, um, you know, a teenager in terms of education lesson and earning a bit of money. And, and this was that Caleb Maddox said that his dad said he has to do chores. That's a non-negotiable in the house and he doesn't get paid for chores. He doesn't get pocket money either because, you know, it, it, it's not into gifts. But for every personal development or business book that he reads and writes a report on, a short um, summary of the book, and presents it, it'll give him $50. And I just thought, that is genius. That is rewarding productivity, rewarding education, rewarding knowledge, and it's not rewarding entitlement. So you could propose, if you're the person, you know, I, sometimes you listen to a book on Audible or you, try, you buy a book and it's that fat, and what, it's like 15 hours or 150,000 words. Um, and there's this new app called Blinklist, I believe, which is summarising books. And you can get 15 and 30 minute summaries of books. I would pay 20 or 30 quid to have a summary of a book that I wanted to read, but I felt like I didn't because maybe it was too big or maybe I didn't have time. Um, and I think there's a career in that for someone to go. Now, the best career ever, not just in earning the 20 or 30 quid for the summary of every book. It's what you're learning, reading and, le and listening to all of these books, which you're going to be able to implement into your own business. 
Someone's going to become a millionaire doing that. I'd like it to be you or your kids. All right, the fifth thing then, and this is um, huge right now, it's easier right now than it's ever been. Uh, and that is to set up a YouTube channel and or a podcast and or a Patreon account and start earning by putting your message out there. Now, a lot of people are just doing it by uh, vlogging and doing daily blogs. Hey, look at me, my life, what I'm up to. And that's cool. I, it's not really my style. I like to educate. Um, but maybe I have to get over myself and just let people into my life and what I'm doing. And maybe they'd like that. I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of people who monetize YouTube for tens or even hundreds of thousands of pounds a year or millions of pounds a year or millions of pounds a month just by gaining subscribers and doing vlogs, maybe some educational edited um, mini short film and documentaries, three, four and five minutes. The same with podcasting. You put your message out to the world and you can sell ad space or sell your other products and services. Patreon, you get paid for your content. People can donate for you putting good work out to the world. Now, what this teaches you is the relationship between money and value. If you put good content out to the world, people will pay you for it. If you don't put good content out to the world, people won't pay you for it. And that is a vital life lesson because you earn money by giving value. Forget all of this socialist stuff. Forget all these you know, gifts and, you know, and everything else and, um, you know, supplements and credits and whatever else. The reality is, if you want to be wealthy, if you want to be successful, if you want to be a self-made, self-starting entrepreneur, then you have to put value out to the world and then there's a delay and then you have to ask for money and then it's paid back to you. And as you increase the quality of your products, services, solutions, uh, then your intellect, your property, your inspiration, then you earn more money. And then as you lose that, you earn less money. And that's the great thing about you have real time connection with your followers, your fans, your purchasers, your consumers of your work and your products. Um, because we're on social media exchanging at the speed of light. So set up all of these online platforms, especially the ones where you can earn money. Start putting content out there and start monetizing them. OK, so let me summarize these then. Ironing for your parents or your friends or your friends' parents. 20p a small item, 50p an item. Listen to podcasts, audio books, watch documentaries on YouTube uh, and um, Amazon and Netflix while you're doing it. Don't burn the clothes, though. Um, and you could earn, I don't know, 50, 100, 150 quid a week part time when you'd have been sitting on your ass anyway. Second thing, go and sell your stuff, your parents' stuff and other people's stuff on eBay and do a JV split on it and then reinvest some of the profits back into buying um, products. Uh, to sell on Shopify, on Amazon, and set up your own e-commerce empire. Go down Millionaire's Row, number three, and, uh, and offer to wash all of the cars and get to know the owners of the cars and build a business around that. It's a great business having car washes. There's loads of them all over the place in shopping centres on, on most streets. You could have a, a, a global network of them earning millions of pounds. You start by washing the cars yourself and learning how it works. The fourth thing is you can review and report on books and audio books that are long and summarize them and get paid for that. And number fifth, set up your own channels on YouTube and podcast and Patreon and all these other places. Put good content out there and ask for donations. We don't need handouts. We need training, education, mentorship, support, accountability. That's what our children need. That's what the next generation need. And that's what my foundation, the Rob Moore Foundation, is all about helping people across the globe, especially underprivileged people. Because I understand and I get, I get, the, I get the sentiment, the caring of wanting to give. Um, you know, there are many people in the third world who haven't even got internet and they haven't got an opportunity and they don't know this stuff. Um, but so I think this is why we need to get the education out there to more people across the globe. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. This live is going to go on my money podcast. So if you search on um, Stitcher or iTunes or now on TuneIn Radio, I believe, uh, for money, um, this a recording of this video will be on the money podcast coming soon. If you've got children, if you know young entrepreneurs, if there's anyone out there that you know could really benefit from listening to this I should have been doing this stuff at school and university instead of doing the subjects that I wasn't interested in. But no one cared to share this work with me or teach me because I didn't know about it. So please share this with other young people you think could really benefit from this. And let's help them go and create an amazing future. Because um, I'm a bit worried with all these wars and all this um, socialism that's, you know, maybe reducing our creativity. And, uh, you know, we need to get out of that mindset, I think.